Listen, I'm not going to lie to you. If everything goes as I hope it does today, then what you're about to see today is probably going to blow your mind. And look, 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 look. I mean, realistically, straight up, what we're doing today is absolutely 100% feature creep. I absolutely positively should not be doing what we're gonna do. Feature creep is bad. I hate it and it's it's pushing back the deadline to this game even further. But, but, but for this particular feature, I just can't resist. Actually though, if we're really being honest, this feature is gonna be a game changer. It's gonna pretty much completely change. It's not gonna completely change how decked out is played, but it's gonna change the feedback to be so, so much better. The biggest problem facing Decked Out, and it was the biggest problem in Decked Out 1, uh, and it's still, even with all of our upgrades here, it's still a problem in Decked Out 2, and that is feedback. Feedback to the player about what is happening to them. What is the state of the game? How are they doing? And are my cards that I've, that I've oh so carefully picked out to be in my deck are they actually being effective and am i getting are things going the way they should be going for me like right now you know we hear the cards as they're played with the audible which is great but you kind of have to just remember wait what did that card do oh it blocks two clank i get okay i guess i have two clank now and maybe maybe when i generate my next two clank maybe i'll hear a noise or something that lets me know that that clank was blocked i don't know i already forgot because sounds and all that stuff it's too complicated and that was the issue that really made this all come to light is that we're just trying to do too much with sounds audio is great for feedback but it can only do so much right it's it's doing heartbeat it's doing card call outs it's doing ambient environment sounds and we wanted to we wanted to do like all these other things like notifications that clank and everything is oh by the way we <laughs> We, we made a little pool for water kittens. It's great. It's even got a little moss man hanging on the background. We love it. But for real, it was just, there was too much being done with audio. And we were gonna try and stack on more things to do with audio. And it's just, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. So today we are gonna work on an insanely cool project and it's gonna involve these things. Okay, so I'm out here on the back side of Decked Out, which looks amazing by the way. And can I just take a moment to give a shout out to Joe of the Hills, okay? Okay, Th this dude is is unbelievable. He has taken it upon himself. I have not asked him because I feel bad. He has done the snow from, he's done all this, all this, all this, all this over here, all this over here, all this, all this up to the, up to the thing with the thing. And he's done so much of the exterior snow work for decked out and I am eternally grateful. Look how cool this cave thing looks. So Joe, if you're watching straight up, you're the best. I thank you so much. Okay, but the reason we're out here now is to talk about maps, okay? Maps. Now, don't get ahead of me here, okay? We're gonna get there. But if you look now, I've got a map of the area here, okay? Everything's great. It's mostly water back here, okay? Which uh, is a good thing. We'll get into that in a little bit. But the cool thing about maps now is as you walk around, okay, you can, do I even have, we'll just use this ender chest. That should work right here, right? Watch. Right, everything, see what, see what my point is over there? I can just go ahead and put this down here, boom. Because I have the map and I'm looking at the map, I get real-time updates. And if I put it in my offhand, the map just updates no matter what I do. If I put, I could put some scaffolding here probably, right? Let's just try that, -na 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 -na. right? And now the map, you see on, see on the map in the bottom left corner, we got the little pointy thing I'm pointing at. You can see the scaffolding right there. I think it updates every second or so. I'm not quite certain. But the point is, real-time updates for maps are insane, insanely powerful. And we've got like, I got this little simple clock here with a redstone block pooping back and forth. Look, do you guys see? You see on the map right above where I'm standing, do you see the red block moving back and forth? That shows how quick, like the block updates and within half a second every time that red dot updates on the map, which means we can change what happens on a map with redstone. But there's a problem. Those of you paying attention at home are gonna say, aha, Tango, that's great and all, but it doesn't really work because as soon as you get outside the range of the map, let me go ahead and land on these skadoodle bits over here and look, wait, 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 wait. Clock's still running. I am still in redstone range. That clock is moving. The map is not updating anymore. That red dot on the map, not moving. So what this means is a player has to be both holding a map in their hand and they also have to be in range of the map to get those dynamic updates. But the interesting thing is, and if you look at my map now, you'll see there are two, two little skadoodle guys there, two little white guys in the area. As long as there is one person in range of the map that causes those maps to update, or causes that map to update, 
anyone else who is who is holding that map also also gets those updates because here i am now on the far side of decked out and looking at the map notice the red dot the red dot is moving because that other guy that other little chap sitting there that's the white the white thing oh, that's tango cam so what i did is i logged in my spectator account tango cam and i did have to temporarily put him into survival but i gave him a clone a copy of this map i'm holding put it in tango cam's offhand and then the thing is the magic still works when he's in spectator uh spectator mode so he's in spectator mode he's gonna stay there forever now but he is holding this map and by him being in this area Area, it forces updates no matter where I go now I will admit I will admit this is a little bit janky right it means to do what we're gonna do today that tango cam has to be logged in all the time right so essentially when we're done making the feature we're gonna make today tango cam's gonna have to be logged in on the server pretty much 24 7 but i'm okay with that i'm okay with that and i think that's not going to be a problem so let's think about what we got here and let's really just take this to the absolute next level what we have is a map i'm holding in my hand here okay we can cause updates on that map that is in redstone loaded range there it's not that far away we can send signals to it and update the map with redstone that means i can hook into any system i want we can this is my clank system right here right over here we've got the hazard system next to that we've got the treasure system and next to that we've got the frost ember system all of these things are right here with all kinds of information about how much stuff is going on how much clank is blocked how much treasure is queued up to be dispensed into the dungeon and as long as i send some redstone signals over to a map coordinator we'll call it I mean, ladies and gentlemen, we can build our own custom user interface for Decked Out 2. And we're talking about a user interface that can display all sorts of feedback to the user based on that showing them and, and conveying the state of the game. How much clank do they have queued up to be blocked? How much treasure is going to be dropped into the dungeon? How much frost embers? You know, how's your how's your hazard system going? Are you generating hazard or are you blocking hazard? Maybe we could tell them how many cards they have left in their deck before they run out of cards. There are so many possibilities here that it's kind of just astonishing. So check it out. Check it out. This is this is the idea I have. We're going to keep it simple here. Okay. I just built these little these two little adjacent five by five areas here and if i step back and you look at my map you can see clearly there's just two boxes on the map okay they look like white boxes but now if i did something like this and i go bloop with extra bloop suddenly those boxes are blue and due to real-time updates we can essentially make a progress bar that shows varying quantities that we need to display to the user by simply adding water to some of these areas is it all making sense there are the gears turning do you see how amazing this is now what works out pretty good here is if you look at the map here first of all it's pretty close to decked out which is just below us here and it's almost all water already. I mean, I've got a little bit of clearing out to do back here. This guy's got to go and stuff. But once this is done, and once I build our amazing happy fun time skadoodle user interface of awesomeness, all I got to do is clone this map 6,422 times and give one of them to every player when they enter the dungeon, right where I give them their compass. So we've got a lot to do. I got a little bit of clearing to do here. Let's get this stuff uh, dug out. I know, I know, I can just see the comments you're furiously typing already. I mean, come on now, listen, it was just a little bit, right? He still did all of this. I just had to chop a little bit off right here. Flying up to the top of Deep Frost Citadel to the... Wait a minute, did I miss a block there? No, nope, that's part of the eyes. Oh, that's right. That's the, that's the spooky eye corner. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. Where is it? Spooky eyes. <laughs> Little subtle things about this building, right? Uh, I never snow capped the roof here. Uh, so here we are. Up on the top of Deep Frost Citadel now, you can see right that one. That's the corner there. And pretty much right there is the corner too. 
that square is going to be our map it's cleared out time to build a user interface Are you ready? Are you ready for the actual map reveal? Ba bam <laughs> Yes! It turned out so great. I absolutely love it. I have to thank Ori, my the same the same artist that did the our amazing door texture. She also did the, the layout of this, and I was like, I just want to keep it simple and clean, under the stand with a few icons, and this is absolutely perfect. And of course, when we put it in the offhand, it is right there on the side. Now, I will recommend for the hermits, there is the, the view bobbing thing or whatever. I turn that off, because watch, if you turn view bobbing on, I mean, you can't even see what's going on. Just don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. So with view bobbing off, it stays nice and steady. It's a little bit weird, because I don't know, I think most people play with view bobbing on, but Anyways, it's nice and steady there now, and now you have a custom user interface built into the game that you just, when when you enter the dungeon and get your compass, you're going to get a map. You throw in your offhand, you're good to go. You now have all kinds of amazing information literally in your palm. Okay, so it should be pretty obvious what we're looking at here, but Frost Embers and Treasures are basically when they get queued up, if you get a card that says plus four treasure, right? Four of these cells will let, right now on the progress bar you're seeing, they're all fully kind of activated. You'll never see this. So when they, the, these will lower, these are at extended right here. These will lower and then water will automatically fill into these cells, making them blue. So you'll have like an empty cell that's like just basically watercolor. Uh, so yeah, basically if you get, you know, a card that says plus four embers, uh, four of these will fill up real quick. And then at the rate that the, the, uh, I say embers, I meant treasures, uh, the rate that the treasure is dispensed into the dungeon, they will turn back off again. So it's a good way for you to know, like, okay, confirmation that a card that says plus 10 treasure, I see 10 lights light up and it lets me know that things are working. Uh, the hazard and the clank are uh, a little different and actually even a little bit better. So for these, when you queue up a car that says like block two hazard, two lights will will light up here. And again, it's cute if you get a two and then a four, you'll be up to six. And then as you generate clank slowly walking through the dungeon, either by triggering a shrieker or by a card that explicitly adds clank, they will go back down again. So this is going to be a much more slow buildup, but also a slow decline uh, progress bar. Uh, and it's a good thing because now you're going to be able to know, like, how am I doing? Did I spend most of my match having positive hazard block or did I spend the entire match with this bar empty? In which case I need to get a lot more hazard block in my in my deck. And same things go with uh, with with clank block, too. It's going to need pretty much monitoring how much surplus you have. You don't want too much, but you don't want too little. And then cards down here. This one's going to take a lot of work, but it's worth it. I think every little uh, two by three white little icon down there represents a card remaining in your deck. So when you uh, first load up your shulker box and you decked out, all of these cards will light up one for each card that you have in your deck. And then as you as you draw cards, they will individually uh, turn blue again. These old, these you know these six wool here will will submerge and water will fill it in. And on the on the map here, you'll see basically they'll deactivate. So you'll know when you're running out of cards, which is going to be incredibly valuable because that's kind of if you're running out of cards, you want to get out of the dungeon pretty quick because you don't have anything else to, to help you. Yeah. So that took the better part of a full day, and as much work as that was, that's nothing compared to what we have coming up here. The redstone is going to be a tremendous amount of work. So the next step is like we've got our bus line system here. You guys are familiar with this how we're sending events all around the game for decked out it seems to be working we're going to use the same concept and make a new bus line from our systems there over back up in the back where is it way back there to where the actual uh, user interface is out there so probably going to loop around the back there and it's, it's a lot more diggy diggy <laughs> So 
I went ahead and did a whole bunch. <laughs> I hooked up a lot of just the main bus line here. I didn't do any of the bulk redstone out there yet, but we got about basically like 13. Uh, goo, goo, goo. Yeah. Let's try that again. <laughs> just my head just floating there. <laughs> How ominous. So anyways, it goes from all the way down there, comes up here, it takes a turn. This time we'll use our feet so we don't kill ourselves. Uh, but this was a ridiculous amount of time because you got to understand a good portion of what we did down here is under the lake that the map is built on and down there way down there it gets to be just, like i had to build my own tunnels and everything it's crazy so we have four main sections this one right here is i dug all this out for the card processor you can see the bottom of the white icons here that's where all the card lifters are going to be then we have the first section here this is the clank block section i basically had to dig out four of these for all of these lifters and the amount of redstone. I mean, it's gonna be bonkers. We got right here, this is the hazard block all the way down there. The treasure row here. And finally, the frost ember queue. This one was completely underwater and I had to borrow some, uh, where are they? Yeah, these things, I borrowed a stack of sponges from Corrales. Thanks, Papa K, you're a lifesaver. So I think I wanna do the hard one first, the cards. There are obviously, so the, the card limit, the most cards you can have in your deck is 40 cards. So there are 40 icons here, uh, two rows of 20. I gotta hook them all up to basically like a super complicated linear extender incrementer decrementer thing. The incrementificator, dun dun dun. Okay, I think I've got all the water in and I think I think it's done. I think it's done. I've currently got five blocks up. Let's look at the look at the uh, look at the map. As you can see there's like five lit up and the rest are blue. I want to check this out now. There's a little uh, area here that allows me to get in. Okay, let's go test it out. I am excited. This thing is an absolute beast absolute beast it's straight up by the way guys this is not my design there comes a time when you have to admit that things are beyond your capacity this is one of those times it's it's quite honestly pretty rare where i can't even understand the redstone and how it works this is one of those times this is crazy this is a a like a one wide 40 block long incrementer there's one of these for each of those guys back there, those two by three little units, cells that represents one card. Uh, it uses, uh, you know, these memory cell things or something. I, I don't know how those work. That's, that's basically magic to me. But the real sketchy part here, this from here over is my design. And uh, you can tell, right? Because the interesting thing is the way the cards are lined out, right? They're two by three each and they're double deep. So really you, we have a card starting every one and a half blocks. And that one and a half makes it tricky. I had to map a 40 wide incrementer to 60 blocks in length again this is like 20 blocks long there's three per but it's too deep so it, there's a lot of math and planning and stuff here and uh i'm just gonna hope it goes okay here we're gonna we're gonna check this out i got an increment here and a decrement here i want to knock it back down so if you look at the map in my hand we have five cells lit up here if i and you can see right there there's like five repeaters lit up here one two three four five and then the rest are off so when I hit this decrementer now, one of those repeaters should go off and one of the cells filled in, it turned blue. Okay, so now if I go ding, ding, ding. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> okay, and now we do the last one and they all turn off. It's a little bit slower uh, filling in because obviously the water's got to fill in. Let's try, let's add four cards. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's so amazing. So what's gonna happen now is when they put their deck of cards into uh, into the game and it unloads all their cards and put it into the shulker, it's gonna send a signal over here for each one that is drawn. Uh-oh. Well, that's not working. Oh, that's not working at all. Why? It's supposed to go top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom and go all the way across. We've got bottom, 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 bottom. <laughs> 
Ah, uh, okay, so there was uh, mistakes were made. I have to uh, debugging. Debugging begins now. And debugging complete. It helps if you actually put in the rest of the rails. Okay, attempt number two here. Everything is drained out. Everything is at zero state. And uh, I think the bugs are fixed. I've got a little clock here that is going to add, we'll say, 31 cards. Race that go. Race that. It helps if I have a repeater there. Hang on. The, the test over. Pick number three. 31 items. Go. Okay. Now, look at the map. It's still not working. What? Oh, am I going too fast? Why is that going so fast? Oh, no. It definitely did too many. You have extra many. <laughs> Hey, I've finally still got some kinks. Let's figure it out. <laughs> and of course, it turns out the problem was with my uh, input clock here. It was uh, getting two updates per item, so it was going too fast. And if you go faster than two ticks, it doubled whammy jammies and did bad. So now I'm going to put 15 items in here. I've slowed the clock down. It should get two updates per item. So when I put in 15, I should get 30 updates on the bar now. Everything's going to be great this time, everybody. I promise. Super amazing. <laughs> Here it goes. So it's ticking up. This would be like your cards or your cards are being loaded from your shulker deck into the game, into your shuffler, and it stops. There we go. And there's 10 slots left. There's 30 lights lit up. Perfect. And then every time it draws a card, this signal here will be updated, decrementing the uh, the lit signal there as well. And then when the game's over, I'll just drain the whole thing out. You know. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so part one is mostly done. The card system. Now I got to move on to these uh, system clock things here. Um, please hold while I kill myself. There, there we go. There we go. Okay. Down here now, where is it? Where's the first one? Right here. Here's the first one. This is clank block. I'm going to get this one set up and working. And then we got to do it uh, three more times, four times total. This is a lot of work. Okay, here we go. Here we go. These things are, these things take a lot of work. There's a lot of resources that go into these things. Check it out. Look at this. I've got, well, hold on over here. I can hop up here. Every one of the cells that you see on the map, those little, like right where my cursor is now on the map, every one of those little blocks, is five by five right there's 15 of them per per row or whatever per system and there's four systems that's a lot of powered rails a lot of observers and a lot of sticky pistons so here we go this clunker is my design uh, i went with this for a couple reasons i had some goals i wanted i wanted to be able to increment as fast as possible like for things like treasure and frost and stuff when you get a card that says you know this card is to give out like plus 10 treasure i didn't want it to take 10 15 seconds for that progress bar to fill up i wanted it to be as fast as possible so it, you can this thing is got like quad speed filling on the on the hopper rate so you can increment this at one tick intervals and it will fill up just fine another advantage is that you can increment and decrement at the same time because it is inventory based essentially it's all about what's in that barrel right there that there's a comparator reading off of that zombie cleo was blown up by zombie cleo you know these things happen where was i before the dog started barking like crazy oh yeah it, it, super fast incrementing uh you can uh, you can increment and decrement at the same time uh and it supports item overflow you'll notice we're using a barrel chest thing up there too because we're actually here let me let me skadoodle up here parkour master ladies and gentlemen uh, uh. those two hoppers are both firing or those two droppers are firing at the same time firing into the uh the the chest boat thing and the chest boat thing quad hopper speed into here and the whole thing works based off of swords uh basically two swords equals one uh one tick on the uh the old comparator skadoodler and then from there like from there all the way down there is one comparator signal up to zero to 15 it's just some clever spacing of the comparators with blocks and stuff so we only decrement one comparator count right here every what is it every six blocks or so so every six blocks we light up the next one and give a little uh observer tick and uh things light up and i'm now realizing that might be the worst redstone explanation 
I've ever done. But to be perfectly honest, I'm just kind of itching to get this done. I've got uh, three more to go down there, a lot more piston and observer placing, and I just want to get this hooked up and do like a quick little mock run and see the cars actually modify the values on the on the map. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> that awkward moment when you realize I can't use redstone blocks above my thing in the thing, powering all my pistons. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, it turns out the replacement for redstone blocks is TNT. That makes me super happy. I can't wait to place all that here. What could possibly go wrong? I don't like the idea that there's observers powering up into TNT. I mean, it should totally be fine, right? Right? 1,500 observers, 1,500 sticky pistons, 1,500 powered rails, and many, many hours. Uh, they're all done. They're all done. All four of them are done and working. I mean, it's not pretty. It's not pretty back here, but it, they're working. As far as I can tell, like we're at the hazard block one right now, and I can go like, oh, one, two, three. And then hazard block will go a one, two, three. There it goes. It's not super fast. It does have to go down like a comparator line and stuff. So it's a, there's a little bit of delay. I mean, there's really two issues. There's how fast I can input. And then there's the delay before it responds. I can, I can input super fast here. But the delay it, before it actually adds those things is is pretty high. But it's good enough, I think, at least. You know, like the, the, the removal, the, de the decrement here. Is more of a queuing system here because it has to queue it up so that you know the way that the hopper pulls it out and stuff but anyways i mean it's working so i'm, I'm itching i'm itching now what i want to do is i want to hook all of this up to the actual game events if you watch like right down here and here and i go down here and then check it out I dug this out because it takes us right to the card processor in decked out of these. I will hook these up to the card increment and decrement lines or card increment and then decrement will be coming from down there. Anyways, we're hooking everything up and we're going to do a little simple trial run and didn't see if it all works. Okay, it is testing time. I hope this works. I've tested them all individually. They work. I haven't tried it with the real uh, real deck of cards though, though. So here's what we got. We got, oh, these are our temp cards. I've got two of each of the commons that we have. Stability, Sneak, Treasure Hunter, and Ember Seeker. So this should test all four of those progress bars. And then obviously I should have eight cards light up on the thing as well. Um, now the thing to keep in mind is sometimes like treasure and frost embers, because as soon as you add treasure, it immediately starts taking away. So if we add like a treasure hunter should add four treasure, we might not see all four light up. We might see only three light up because it's already starting to do some, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, all right, I'm gonna sleep here and uh we're gonna go now i'm not actually doing a real run here i'm not gonna go into the dungeon i'm just gonna sit at the entrance and test cards uh so again we should see eight cards light up i hope there's no way this is gonna work the first time but i'll be super excited if it does go okay give me a card do the thing we still gotta light that up better one of the things that's bad is notice how dark the uh what do you call it the map gets in certain areas here right like it's when you go into low light, the map gets really hard to read. Okay, we should start seeing cards incrementing soon. Of course, it's not gonna work, I would imagine. It's not working, oh, there they go. Okay, two, only two. I think there might be an issue on the, I'm, I'm pulling it off of a hopper and I think there might be a solid stream of cards. Let's see if this works out. Wait, we're gonna, we're gonna edit this so we just hear the card callouts. Okay, Ember Seeker plus, oh, that was amazing. And it was, oh, why is there treasure? Why did treasure go up? That was weird. Ember Seeker popped up twice there and went down as it should. I don't know why treasure went up. Why is treasure going up and down? <laughs> treasure, go home, you're done. Treasure Hunter. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Treasure Hunter went up to probably four again, but it immediately starts processing them out. Oh, it's... It's messed up. It went up again. Something is making Treasure Hunter go up a little bit. I'm not sure what it is, but you can see how it's slowly pulling the treasure out. That's so cool. So you see when it bursts up when you get a card draw and then it fades out. Yeah, something is still ticking that up. I'll have to look and see what that is. One minor bug though. We're okay. There's the sneak with the one clank block. Perfect. <laughs> I can't tell you how excited I am right now. Now that should stay until I generate Oh, that's that treasure. Some some clock, like a card draw or something, is pulsing the treasure line. I probably just got redstone signals mixed up somewhere, but that's okay. That's that's a minor thing. We can track that down. I want to get a stability now. 
Stability. There it is. It actually pops up before the card calls out. Locked. Oh, and it blocked. <laughs> That's amazing. The timing is so good on that. Like the second it says hazard blocked, the thing went down. Still got the treasure thing. Let's see if I can go block a clank. Hopefully there's not a ravager around here to eat my face. Stability. Stability. Hazard blocked. I'm so confused. Okay. Clank blocked. <laughs> So what just happened there? Why did it play? Blank blocked. Why did it play? Okay. Something's messed up there. We got two stability cards playing right away. Is at least that's what I think I'm gonna have to go check the edit. This is that's the best part about this, is this is gonna be such a great debugging tool. That I definitely should not have has blocked. Okay, has Clank blocked. There's no reason I should be blocking Clank right now. This is a fantastic debug tool. Okay, my heartbeat is kicking in. You can see the treasure went up with treasure hunter. And then it's fading down slowly as it's depositing treasure into the dungeon. I think we have like one Frost Ember card left. And that should add two Frost Embers, I think. Let's wait for one more here. Hazard locked. Ember Seeker. There's the last Ember Seeker. It went up to two. Down to one. And you can hear the treasure coming into the dungeon. I'm not sure what's adding treasure. Okay, that's not bad. That's not a bad first run. We got a little bit of wonkiness, but I think I just got some redstone wires crossed out. This is amazing i love the feedback of this sneak there's the sneak it blocked one clank that's the last card i think that's the last of that's the eighth one now i think oh we got ravagers and treasures <laughs> gotta go gotta go all right i'm calling that a resounding success absolute success there we got to finish this up here we have so much to do okay this is great this is great this is going to be amazing feedback for the player it's going to be a great debugging tool for me to find out some of these odd things you're like why did we get all those clank blocks there when we should for instance we got to figure out what's pulsing treasure maybe too much treasure <gasps> i know what that is i know what that is i forgot i just realized because that click right there ignore all that that is wait for it over here Yes, this is my automatic treasure for Cater. It automatically deposits treasure into the dungeon. I'm guessing, why isn't that going down? Oh, because the games, oh, we have so much to test. That's what's going on with the treasure though. That's what was making the treasure pulse. I'm so excited right now. Well guys, it's not working perfectly, but it's there. We've got some, some, some minor things to debug, but this is the greatest thing ever. I cannot wait for this to be accurate and precise and counting, counting cards. We're gonna get all that working very, very, very soon. And that, as they say, is all I got time for. It is late. I wanna get this video out to you guys tomorrow. I cannot wait to get this all working. Thank you guys so much for watching. Level two redstone coming up soon after that, level three.